Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. And today I'm joined by one of the legends of the game who's been playing for many years at the highest level. Also in top four of US right now, it's going to be Michael Pramwatt. So we've got a lot to discuss and we will uh, get into some games as well. So Michael, how's it going? Uh, it's doing really good, uh, you know, prepping for Worlds. Uh, been playing a little bit of the new format with the, with the Celestial Storm, but mm. overall pretty good, yeah. Nice. So we'll kick it off with uh, where are you from, how old are you, and what's your profession? Uh, let's see. Uh, I currently live in uh, Indianapolis, uh, Indiana, uh, and uh, I'm from the uh, Virginia, Maryland area, uh, so like a little bit south of D Washington, D.C., and currently I play Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah. How long have you been playing Pokemon? Uh, about a year now, so, uh, a little bit after my EUIC win. Yeah, but your yeah. over overall as a player, how long have you been playing? Uh, oh, uh, yeah, 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 uh, I've been playing for a long time, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, geez, uh, right after Base Set came out, so whenever, if you look that up, that's when I started. Like, yeah. Like right, right at like when Jungle came out, like a little bit after that is when I started. Sweet. And uh, who's your favorite Pokemon? Uh, my my, I have a bunch. Let's see. But my mm. first favorite was Zapdos. Okay. Um, and then like I have a bunch of like like sideline favorites, but I guess uh, Zapdos is the OG favorite. Nice. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite Pokemon video game? Favorite video game, uh, I think like the exclusive Pokemon game. It's Pokemon Snap. Oh, nice, good, cool. Yeah, like like there's like other games that have Pokemon in it, which like you know I, I like I, I really like uh, Smash Brothers, mm -hmm. but uh, exclusive Pokemon game I think is Snap. Cool. Uh, this one normally takes people a couple minutes to think about, but uh, if you were an Elite Four member. What would your type be, and what would your team include? So five Pokemon, all with the same type. All right, let's see. And we're not going to do any of that like Bruno stuff, where he has like two Onyx. No. Well, I mean, if you if you want to have if you want to double up, you can. Uh, let me think. Um, I'm gonna go with. I think I think Lightning are the coolest types. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Zapdos would be in there. Uh, I actually I really like Jolteon. Mm -hmm. He would be in there. Um, probably have Magnezone in there. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, I would have Manetric. Uh, sure. Like that would be like my Mega Pokemon. Okay. Cool. Nice. Meta gaming. Uh, yeah. <laughs> let's see. Um, I would also let's see this. That's Magnezone, Manetric, Jolteon, Zapdos, and how many? Am I picking five? Yeah, let's so go, this is the last. Let's go five. Yeah. All right. Uh, last one. It would be. This is a real tough one. Let's see. I think I would probably. It might be Tapu Koko because I, I I probably I think I want like one of the Kokos in there. No, no, it would be Raikou. It'd be Raikou because uh, cool. Raikou looks like a pug and pugs <laughs> are kind of fun. It's like a bulldog pug thing, so it's like <laughs> so it has like a funny face. <laughs> and yeah, it's still really OP. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Okay. In a similar vein, uh, can you pick a starter from each generation? Uh, this is much easier for me. Okay. Let's see. Gen one, it's Squirtle. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gen 2, uh, we're picking Totodile because for Alligator is a boss. Mm -hmm. um, Gen 3, Torchic. Uh, Gen 4, this is Diamond Pearl? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Diamond Pearl, hmm. What are the starters for Diamond Pearl? Let's see. It was. We got Chim oh, Chop like up into Twitch. Infernape, that, that one. Yeah. Uh, let's. I would. Would I pick Infernape? Mm, no, Torterra. Okay. 
Yeah. And then uh, Gen 5, this is black white, yeah. right? Yeah. M4. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then Gen 6 is XY, which is. What was the XY starters? Uh, uh, it's, it's, um, what's it called? <laughs> it's hard, right? <laughs> uh, no one cares about Gen 6. Everyone just picks Froki straight away. It's Froki and then two others. Yeah. Um, it was, we got Del Fox was, and. Del, oh, yeah. Del Fox uh, sucks. And Chestnut. Who also sucks. Yeah, I, I it's, think, it's, anyway. it's for Ninja, like, hands down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. And then uh, Sun and Moon starters. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Oh, it, Litten. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And who's best, Ash, Brock, or Misty? Uh, Brock, because uh, Brock has the most personality. That's true, that's true. All right, let's change it back to the card game. What's your all-time favorite card in a playing sense? Let's go for all-time favorite card. Yeah. Hmm. I I think let's see. I I guess New Era Tapu Tapu Lele is probably the, one of the better ones, but. <laughs> True. But hold it, hold it. Uh, let's I'll go overall. I think. Oh, you know what my favorite card was? Uh, was Trash Exchange. Oh, nice. The throwback. Yeah. Like way back, but it was super cool, and like, it didn't. It didn't like break the game like Trump Card did. Mm-hmm. Um. But what it did do was it let you. Uh. It let you like combo off with uh for alligator so like that it it made for alligator viable which was cool it really did and it always took so long to do the whole thing because it's so much shuffling yeah it's so much shuffling and removal and all that stuff okay what's your favorite full art card uh favorite full art hmm um I've been really stepping it up with the full arts recently. I think uh, my new favorite is TV Reporter. Because it's like... Yeah, so here's the reason. It's like a cool update of like a really... Of an older card. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really enjoy that aspect of it. Yeah. Definitely a cool one. Okay, so what's your favorite deck of all time? Man, you've got a lot of... (laughs) A lot of time to go over here. Yeah, I already I already know what it is. Okay. Uh, my, so my favorite deck to play uh, is uh, the Mulock deck from two thousand six, mm-hmm. where it, like it uses Pow Hand extension like twenty million times. And... <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite deck. Wow, I would have banked my life on Guardi Gallade being up there. Okay. Uh, you would think so, but. I mean, it's up there, right? But it's yeah. not, like, the, my most favorite card. Fair Or enough. deck. What about your favorite era to play in? Uh, favorite era? Mm, I think it's probably... Let's see. 2000... I actually like 2010 a lot. Uh, that was one of my favorites. 2010 was real good. Yeah, I'm just going to go with that. I think that was like the most balanced the game has ever been. Nice. Uh, what deck has brought you the most success? Uh, let's see. Most success. Uh, I would say... Uh... I think the most success is actually Evil Tall Garb. Uh, that was like the hi- like my highlight win. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was the most success. Like if we're talking about most tournaments, uh, it's Night March. Right. But the highest achievement is from Evil Tall Garb. Cool. Um, what's the worst deck you've ever played in a tournament since being what you'd, you'd call an experienced player? 
I've played a lot of bad decks. Um, <laughs> and, and I think that's just part of, uh, like, uh, you know, experimenting and trying new things. But uh, the most re- – let's see. The worst, the worst deck – hmm. Maybe – See, what could it be? I think the worst worst deck is probably like I played. Oh yeah, okay. So I have a few. I, I played one, one that was really bad this year. Uh, it was Nine Tails Zork. That was real bad. <laughs> um, also played. Uh, let's see. Also played, um, but I think that maybe the worst deck I've ever played is probably. Oh, it's not Steelix. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that because I can't think of anything like strictly worse. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. And what's the worst deck you've ever lost to? Again, since being an experienced player worst deck I've ever lost to uh, hmm this is another hard one because I have to dig deep <laughs> it's a lot of games yeah yeah I can imagine there's got to be some standout ones where you're just looking for a discard pile like what the heck <laughs> what? yeah i mean like I've, I've lost i've lost time like so there have been times where i've lost to like bad plays but they were playing like a decent deck yeah uh but worse deck and it's all it, of course it's always the times where you're like you're dead drawing mm -hmm. uh I, I i feel like i've lost to a theme deck before uh, oh, but I, I think the worst const the worst deck to lose to is um, Executor uh, Electrode. Okay. From like, yeah, because <laughs> that deck is just pure troll. <laughs> <laughs> All it's trying to do is trying to give you prizes so it can flip a lot of coins and do a lot of damage. And then like, it doesn't. It didn't have like Victory Star like it does today. No. Like we have it today. It just kind of just high rolled it, and it was just <laughs> like, okay, man. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the worst deck, Fair like enough. the worst competitive. Okay. All right, we'll change the pace again. Who do you regard as the best player of all time? Or oh, you've got a good scope as well. Good scope of knowledge to pick from. You've been best there player from of the, all time from all the right, off. Let's... Uh, I think probably Puka is probably the best player um, to have played the game. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, like, I generally I think I think uh, at the high, higher end, it's all pretty even. Yeah. But uh, he's definitely the player who I think uh, sees the most in terms of like how far things go. Yeah. Fair enough. And what about in the last three years? Could you narrow it down? Let's see. Best player last three years? Mm -hmm. um, it's probably Tord. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that one's pretty hands down. Uh, just because like, he's like the total package, right? Like yeah. a lot of people are like really good deck builders, really good players. He happens to be both. <laughs> so it's it's very, it's very, uh, it, it when, when that comes together, it's very special. It's a pretty good combo, yeah. Yeah. Who's your favorite player to test with or exchange ideas with? Ooh, look at this spice. I thought I had spice. Got the plumeria. Uh, but, uh, favorite player to test with? Hmm. Um... I know my favorite type of player. It's the it's the type of player who like brings weird st things to the table. <laughs> okay. Uh, because like, you know, we can we can grind like a, a known matchup to the ground, yeah. and then like we already know it. But like, it's someone who brings weird stuff. So uh, favorite like, so an example of this would be like, uh, uh, Puka would always bring weird stuff. <laughs> um, in more recent times. 
Uh, I think a player like Kika is pretty good with bringing weird stuff. Yeah. Uh, I, I think actually my favorite current player is Chris Murray or Chris Leandro. Okay. Uh, just because he brings a lot of he brings a lot of weird stuff, so it's always fun to like hear what he has, what he brought. Uh, sometimes they're duds, but that's just the case of how it is. Yeah. Um. But when he has like, when he has something good, it's it's fun. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> nice. And do you have any rivalries in the game, or is there a player that you'll just happen to face a lot in tournaments, like more than anyone else? Uh, you know. Uh, at the regional and higher level, there isn't any player I, I specifically play against a lot just because uh, the tournaments are so big. Mm-hmm. But um, in terms of rivalries, uh, I think... I think... Uh, hmm. I think I have a, I guess... Uh, a rivalry with like, uh, what was it like, Azul, Ryan, uh, just players who are getting uh, so uh, just because like they're uh, we're all competing for like the high number of regional wins. Yeah. So like, um, I think that keeps it interesting. You pulled ahead now, but that was a point where there was a few people on the same number. And yeah. That was cool so, to see. And it's, it's still ongoing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's still ongoing, but, you know, they could catch up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Where do you place yourself as a player on a national and global level? Wow, Gladion, all this stuff. Uh, as a player, I, I I think on a national level, I'm definitely, like, I think I, I think top, I, th- I definitely think I'm, like, a top four or five player. Mm-hmm. Uh, just, I don't know where I would land exactly, but I think I'm up there. And then, uh, as a, uh, let's see, and then as a, uh, so give me a second, I'm just going to think up my turn yeah, real quick. That's fine, that's fine. Uh, let's see, in, in terms of, uh, a national or a global level, I think I'm probably I think I'm I'm in the top eight. I, I don't know, just because there's just more people to include. Yeah. Uh, so there are people who are like really good, but then there are like people who are just like right on the door mm-hmm. of, of entering that like group sure so uh i think yeah i think i'd probably be like a top four t- top four player in north america and then like maybe a top eight player worldwide uh i, I don't know if I, I i wouldn't i would like to think i'm, I'm like the best but yeah. uh <laughs> as for whether that's true or not you know we'll see yeah okay and um, what would you say is your biggest strength as a player Biggest strength, uh, definitely planning the end game. Mm-hmm. And so, like envisioning how I'm going to win a game, and then uh, taking steps to achieve that. Yeah, nice. As I, as I think, my strongest, uh, my strong suit. Fair. And what would you say is your biggest weakness, or maybe something you're always trying to improve on as a player? Uh, my biggest weakness is probably. Uh, not deck building per se, but like deck of uh, theory crafting. Okay, I think is my weakness, my weakest point. Mm-hmm. Uh, just because I feel like I can. Uh, let's see here. I can be better at it, and I'm not. So I, I would definitely need to improve on that part. I think. Yeah. Cool. Oh my god, it's all going on in here. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what's the last tournament you attended? Uh, the last tournament I okay. So the uh, last official tournament I attended was NAIC, but I 
we did do like an eight man double elimination tournament uh uh just like last weekend uh uh-huh. consisting of like eight players from the indiana or not indiana indianapolis area mm-hmm. uh so that and we did like a double elimination tournament style which i uh, ended up winning nice nice uh what's been your best result in the last year uh, best result in the last year is definitely the the three regional wins I I slam dunked the last year. Uh, yeah. But my uh, but in terms of individual tournament, I think it was uh, my latest one with uh, winning Memphis. I think that was my best tournament of the season. Nice. What's been your best result at Worlds? Sorry to bring it up. Uh, second place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah that, that, that's definitely my best. Um, it is what it is, but... Yeah, I mean, people would kill for that, so... Yeah. I, I, I don't think too poorly of it. Yeah. Uh, it, it was like... So here's the thing about when you lose like really close like that. Uh, it's really sour for the mm-hmm. first five minutes, right? Yeah. But then, you know, five minutes go by, you're like... I did get second place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> and especially if, like, you can see, so, like, uh, Worlds was especially sour because, like, you know, he had to get, like, pretty fortunate to get the correct top deck. How? But, like, for me, it, uh, you know, like, for, but another, like, I got a second place at uh, U.S. Nationals, and I just, I got to spend the entire game watching it happen. <laughs> so <laughs> there's, there's, it's like even though the result was the same, I got second. Um, how long it took, you know, before you accept, you, you know, you're like man, I'm getting, I'm getting destroyed. Yeah. So like, uh, for example, I, I think Tor took it pretty well when he lost. Sure. You're right. Like he saw, his, he saw what was happening all of game two, and he was just like, yeah, <laughs> here it is. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I lose. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's, I think it's fine. Yeah, fair play. Uh, what's been your favorite world's location? Favorite world's location? Uh, it's probably Hawaii. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think Hawaii's always been pretty good. Yeah. Have you been to uh, Hawaii more than once? Yeah, I have. There was once, one time in twenty. 20- or 2010 and another time in 2012 yeah cool what's been your proudest tournament result of all time maybe not necessarily the best but the one that always sticks in the head is like wow i thought that was like a crazy achievement or something like that uh the one that sticks in my head the most is oh boy yeah let's see uh, I think. Let's see, just finishing up this turn real quick. Yeah, yeah. And then. Uh, I think my craziest achievement has to be. The three, yeah, it's definitely the three regionals, like three regional ones in one calendar year. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, winning one tournament, one major tournament is already like, wow, that's a lot, right? Yeah. Winning two is kind of crazy. And then like winning three is like <laughs> definitely like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And uh, let's talk about uh, the current standard and actually let's talk about worlds okay what's the current best deck in standard as in just past just after the neic and then looking at worlds like from what you've played so far why would you why would you put your finger on for the best deck currently in standard Hmm, best deck currently in standard Mm -hmm. um hmm I think the best deck currently in standard for NAAC was probably. Uh, I think I, I still think it's Buzzwall. Uh huh. For in the NAAC format, but going into Worlds, I think the best deck is. It's actually way up in the open. I actually there's a lot of decks I like. Um, I like the Requaza deck. 
Mm-hmm. And I know a lot of people don't like it, but I, I like it. Yeah. Uh, I also like... Uh, I'm a big fan of the the Zor control deck. Yeah. And I really like... Uh, I think Garbodor base decks are really good right now too. Yeah. So, those are like the three best. I think the three best concepts going in. Um. Yeah. Uh. But my favorite deck in the current, at least currently, is Zora Control. Uh. It's just basically a a, a super a busted mill deck. <laughs> yeah. It's really insane. Yeah. Okay. And what about expanded? The nurse have just come in. What do you think about them? Uh, expanded. Let's see. I, I think I think Night March is still decent. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. What else is pretty decent still? Uh. Anything that gets this and Hex was, like, preventing from being good. Yeah, I think... Yeah, Nightmarch is still good. Uh, Buzzwall is still solid. I actually think maybe Malamar might be good now, just like the slower decks. Uh Uh-huh. Hex always holding them back. Yeah, like, Hex is holding them back. Uh, I think, like, maybe Toad Bats might be really good again. Oh, cool. I'd like to see that have a day yeah. out again. So that would be cool. Yeah. And yeah, I, I think those are the decks that are pretty good. Nice. What do you prefer to play? Do you prefer standard or expanded? Uh, I'm actually more excited about expanded. Okay. Uh, the I mean, I've played some standard. It's just like it's a lot of the same decks with some additional stuff, yeah. which is cool, but. Uh, I definitely am more in favor of getting it in my hands into like expanded because everything is different. Mm. Well, I think you've ground me out here. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is crazy. <laughs> oh dear. We've we've gotten to this point. <laughs> you made it. You made it. Last float stone, last prize. Feels good. Well, yeah, that's good. Okay. Um, if you could ban any one card from expanded and standard, what would it or they be if they're different cards? Uh, ban any one card from standard oh, and expanded. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I think I would ban. Let's see. Um. Well, puzzle's already going, so that's good. You got me. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> that's crazy. It's such a weird <laughs> game. <laughs> yeah, it went all over the place. I've just realized I don't even have a Diancy in this list. Oh, <laughs> I was like, I made I this for it. I so made every this. Time I, I was yeah. like, I got a parallel you, so you can't play down here. <laughs> <laughs> I made this like three minutes before we started. I need to figure out a way to fit this in. Yeah. It's like, I don't think uh, Celestial Storm cards come in until like a few more days. Ah. Uh-huh. Yeah, or or is that is that true? I don't know. Yeah, I think it's the third. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Have you thought of any bands? Now that puzzles, uh, yeah. puzzles so already gone. Yeah, I think... Um, I think a Rangaroo needs to go. <laughs> so do I now. <laughs> After seeing that display. Yeah. Dearie me. You just think it is like a kills design space type thing just denies uh, it 
Yeah, so any, I think anything that denies a win condition mm-hmm. is fundamentally bad. Yeah, that's pretty fair. So, like, um, anything that d- denies deck out from ever being a, a condition, mm-hmm. like, like you have to get real hokey to, to, not, to actually deck out in a Ranguru. Like, it has to involve handiwork. Yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I think any anything that does not denies win conditions like that is fundamentally bad. Yeah, that's fair. Um, are you a player that likes to master one or two decks, tweaking as you go? Or will you pretty much play any deck if you think it's right for an event? I'll play any deck that's, if I think it's right for an event. Uh, but if I'm, like, left to my own devices, I'll probably, like... <clears throat> zone in on like one or two decks yeah and then like unless something uh happens to where like it changes my mind on on like the format then i'll like stick with one of those or one or two decks yeah that's fair um do you have a certain play style of, or philosophy when you're sort of choosing these decks making your short list sure uh i i think my, my general go-to is play with what you're comfortable with um i think that's like the best advice I can give to anyone. Yeah. Uh, but in terms, in terms of like personally, uh, play the. I always play the deck that gives me the highest chance of making day two. Okay. Uh, just because you. So I, I try to avoid slower decks if I yeah. can, yeah. unless it's like overwhelmingly like just super strong. <laughs> yeah. Um. But otherwise, I I tend to avoid those decks. Mm-hmm. Uh. So when you say highest chance, do you mean like the best power level on its own, or maybe like just yeah. a good matchup spread? Yeah, you... like high, highest like matchup spread power level like combined. Okay, like, like that combined stat. Yeah, I think fair is, enough. Uh... So let's see here. Um... But yeah, I I think yeah I I think just playing with what you know is the best. But if something is so like, don't play what you know. If you're if what you know is like Napoleon, like, <laughs> right? like pick pick one of the pick pick at least a, t- a tier one deck and then run with that. Yeah. Uh, uh, so like, and if you don't know it, learn it. Um, but in terms of for me, I just pick whatever I think gives me the highest chance of making day two because you could play the best deck, but if the best deck takes. 40 minutes to win a game, and then you lose game one while you lost the series. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay. Um, are you a superstitious player? Do you have any lucky charms that you play with? Yeah, or a little set bit. Routine? I, I, I think I am a little superstitious. Uh, so here's here's what I do, and I know it's kind of dumb. <laughs> um, is I, I decide one side of the table has a lucky side. Oh, boy. And that involves, like... Uh, I'll like figure. I'll, I'll try to figure out what sides of the lucky side, and then I'll like only try to play on that side of the table for the rest of the tournament. Okay. okay. <laughs> so is it after round one where you decide what's the lucky side, or is it? Yeah, it's like one, it's like it takes like two rounds to figure it out. <laughs> like after round like two, I'm like, all right, this is clearly the lucky side. <laughs> I'm two zero on it. You know. <laughs> What else can go wrong with this side? <laughs> it's, so, it's just so good. So really, it's just whichever side you sat on first <laughs> just becomes yeah, the lucky like side. Yeah, whatever side I sat on first and then won. Like, <laughs> two in and that's the lucky side. That's great. Okay. So guys, if you're in America playing tournaments, try and sit on the same side as Pram. It's going to work. Yeah, and, and, and like... Uh, so like... But, but like, if I lose my first round, right, I'll be like... Let's try the other side. Of course. <laughs> of course. So, I mean, I, I, I feel like that's, like, uh, the, as superstitious as I get. Yeah. Fair. Okay. Um, where am I now? Do you pay much attention to foreign tournaments? Uh, I try to pay attention to Europe. Uh-huh. Uh, in terms of, I don't... Oceanos, uh, they have so few tournaments, which is unfortunate for them. So I don't get to pay attention as much, but generally what I've noticed is they're like, they just play whatever the U.S. just played. Yeah. Uh, whereas like, you can you can definitely tell two distinct meta games from like U.S. and Europe, mm-hmm. and it's always interesting to see uh, those meta games like 
clash with each other at internationals. Yeah. Uh, because, like, for example, the United States love Buzzwall, <laughs> but Europe hates Buzzwall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's a very interesting dynamic. Yeah, definitely. And trying to trying to piece together, like, now it's super important to piece together what the other nation is going to play, because that's, like, the other half of the room nowadays, really. Yeah, yeah. Maybe not so drastic, but at least the top players at some point they'll have to fight out. Um, how do you test before big tournaments? Um, I think I just do. Uh, I, I just try to get in a lot of games. Mm-hmm. I think that's generally what I do. Um, and it's been pretty good. I think getting in like I'm about to run into a wall here. That's fine. <laughs> uh, I, th- I think getting in as many games as you can is important. Mm-hmm. And that like you just want to be super comfortable with your deck and and uh also, it's important to ch- uh, the tryout like techs, but you have to also consider like you don't want your tech to mess up your consistency. Yeah. So it's an, and it's also like I also try to ignore decks that I don't have information on. So like, so for example, I heard about Tord's deck uh, like Thursday afternoon, right? Mm-hmm. But all I know about it was like uh, Zul. Pure Zork Flare Grunt. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't put this together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What enough. am I going to do with, what am I going to, all I know is he runs like Flare Grunts, and, a Flare Grunt, and, and, and just pure Zork. And I'm like, okay, man. I can't, I can't do anything with this. So I, I, it's like, you can't like get too hung up on like what other people are doing. Yeah. But uh, another thing that I think is bad is when people get, uh, uh, super into their own metagame. Mm-hmm. So, like, they'll, like, they'll go, like, three steps further in their own metagame than, like, what, where the metagame actually is. Sure. And then, like, they're like, oh, why are people still playing this deck? Yeah. Uh, and, and they Because they just lose. <laughs> and, <it's> like, <laughs> and it's like, man, I don't know, man. Why, why, are, you, why are you playing what you're playing, dude? <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, what's the next tournament you're preparing for? Uh, World Championship. Uh, yeah. I um, I think I'm, I have a day two, so I have the luxury of kind of scouting out what day one players are playing. Hopefully they're, it's within the scope of what I think is going to be the metagame. Uh-huh. If it's not, I'm going to have a lot of... Uh, I'm going to need a lot of time on that Friday to prep. Yeah. So... Yeah, hopefully it'll be within uh, what I think it's going to be. If not, then I'm going to be in some trouble. But <laughs> everyone's in the, that boat. It's yeah, the... but you know that it is what it is, right? So yeah. All right. How much time would you say that you spend on Pokemon each week? Maybe between playing, theory, reading articles, any of those. Where you, how much would you say? You know, I, I actually, when people asked me this question before, I used to I actually used to give an underestimation of how much time I actually thought and played and uh i used to just be like eh, i don't know like a few hours a week right and, and then like i started actually like clocking how many hours i i, I spent like thinking about it you know looking at other things uh-huh. and it was actually uh probably like at least 12 hours uh like and then and that's just like a low ball. Yeah. Uh so I, like even when I'm not um even when I'm not playing the game, I'm like looking at what other people are doing. Sure. So it's like that goes under like research. Yeah. Uh so I'm doing I, I, I guess like I'm probably like it's probably a better to ask a per day, uh, rather than a week and I guess I could like yeah, sure. And b- backwards engineer it <laughs> on how many per week, but I guess per day. Let me let me think about per day. Uh, per day is probably close to like uh, three to four hours a day at, at the very least. Sure. 
so I guess times seven, yeah. So like, yeah, let's just say four, and then so it's like I guess I guess I'm around twenty eight hours uh, a week, maybe, but that's just like low ball. Yeah, I think it can't be less than that. Yeah, it's 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 just like at least let's just say at least like around thirty hours yeah. a week. Fair enough. Um, and that's and, and so like you can get better and not even be playing the game. You can do research things like that. I think like you know looking at what other people are doing, thinking about how that interacts with what you're doing. Does your what you're doing needs to be improved? You know, take into a and, and and I think those count. So I think if you're like, I think I probably think and play about what the game, about like, at least thirty hours a week. Um, but at a tournament, like if you have like a tournament weekend, then you're you're spending at least twelve hours there yeah. on the tournament. So it's like, so like, <clears throat> and, and and this is just like on a on, on a week that I don't have anything going on. Yeah. Right. So naturally, when a tournament's up and coming, and when you're actually there, it's gonna spike. Yeah, it spike. It probably like doubles at least. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Have there been any cards or decks that you were like really excited to play when you saw like scans of them or whatever, and then it just absolutely flopped as soon as you started testing with it? Yeah, I mean, I think that's always the case uh-huh. with new cards. Um, so, one of the new cards I really like is Electrode. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> okay. And you know, it's not that good. <laughs> but. <laughs> But I, I I have this fully built Electrode Eggs deck. Oh, uh, wow. but like I have the list pumped out. You know, I'm just re- I'm ready to play it on PTCGO. I'm gonna probably bring it with me to Worlds. Mm-hmm. It's not good, but maybe I can convince someone to play it at the Open. My goodness, wow! <laughs> and hopefully they'll do well, right? Like all they have to do is flip three heads out of five. <laughs> That's it. But you know, we have uh, there's a Victini in. Um, in Guardians Rising, that lets knows Victory Star. Oh yeah. So, so you get the reflip. Yeah, I mean it's just a trode eggs deck, and so like, and I also think Bennett is probably not that great. Uh-huh. Uh But I've put a lot of time into that. Uh, I or some time into it. Yeah. Uh, I put some time into Miss Magus. Oh okay. And I know that's been talked about a little bit recently. Yeah. Uh, but I think the more time you put into it, the more like. The worse it gets. Yeah, <laughs> that's so true. So, so like, it sounds like really great, right? And then you start putting time into it, and then it's it gets progressively less great mm. to where it just kind of fizzles out at like mediocre. Yeah. Well, oh, poor Miss Magius. Oh, yeah. Wow. It'll be one of those where someone flips it over against you. It works, and you just slap your head and you're like you're like you did not put enough time into this <laughs> like, i was there for 40 hours and i know that's not the right thing to do but you've done it against me brilliant yeah 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 oh dear okay uh what are the new decks that you're excited for from the new set i know you've already touched on a few but are there any other yeah yeah i mean uh so i was really excited for blaziken until we no longer have blaziken uh <sighs> I know, sad. <laughs> uh, I really wanted Ludi Cargo to be good, just because it's like an old deck. But then I just realized they just straight nerfed Ludi Colo. Oh, they did. Like, have you, have you noticed some of the old older cards? They cut like, they got reprinted. Yeah. They've actually been nerfed. Yeah, like, they were too good. <laughs> Like, these cards from 10 years ago were too good for the current format. It's yeah. like, excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but in terms of, like, new, full-on new decks, uh, I, you know, I already I already said I liked Rayquaza. Yeah. Uh, I think Bennett has a chance next format. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I really want, like... Uh, I really want... Uh, the I want beast I want stack attacker to be good. Yeah, uh, it hasn't been great so far, but you know maybe next next format it might be better. Yeah, uh, and so um I think I like beast box stuff. Uh, oh Malamar, I think Malamar is not that good right now. I mean like even though people ha- have success for it, with it, I think in terms of like the the pure number of people playing it and then like. 
how well it does is just not not good enough. Yeah, the conversion uh, rate is still low. Yeah, it's yeah, it's just not great. Mm-hmm. So I think Malamar can be improved. I think it's probably really good in uh, next format just because everything gets like the power level gets uh, lower. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Um, that's cool. Uh, mm-hmm. Looking forward to next uh, next format. Uh, what's cool about uh, the, at least for the U.S. season of regionals is we have like blocks of formats. Mm-hmm. So like, well, uh, it, I don't know if you've looked at the schedule, but it's like standard, standard, expanded, expanded, standard, expanded, expanded. <laughs> so you get like you get to like stay in a format for a little bit, whereas like, and, and I feel like that kind of hurt uh, at least the U.S. players a little bit. Uh, because like we have to split our time on multiple formats, where uh, Europe gets to just focus on standard, so they get to bring the spice. Like they're they're just so far ahead of us on standard. Yeah. Whereas like, <laughs> you know, we you look at the one expanded regionals Europe has, and it's just like they're just they're just they just took what we played. <laughs> yeah, that we just don't care about it at all. Yeah, so it's like because uh, there's you know everyone has everyone shares how much time they can spend into the game. Yeah, like 24 hours a day, but like so, like we have to split our time up. But so with the with the blocks being a little bit more um, centralized, I think it helps it out a lot. Yeah, it's definitely going to be. I think it's going to be a higher quality in both formats, just because of the way that they've done it this way around. Mm-hmm. Okay, where am I? My computer's just bugged out on me, but we're still okay. We're alive. Okay. Um. How do you analyze and test with new cards? Mm. So first things that first thing I do is I'll like look at all the new cards, and then I'll start thinking about how they interact with cards that are currently in the format, and then I'll start thinking about how they interact with cards that like are not played in the format. Okay. Uh, and so you can like and so like uh, what I'll do is uh. I'll bring up like really old decks, deck lists, and uh, you know, Limitless is a good, great resource for that. Like, uh, I'll bring up like old deck lists of like decks that like had a one-off sh- uh, showing, and I'll compare and see what's going on. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much my process for going through new cards. Uh, sometimes the new cards, there's like a, uh, a bunch of new cards that are clearly just supposed to be together, <laughs> yeah. and then uh, I'll play those together. But yeah, yeah, they do like to spoon spoon feed us with the newer sets. There's normally one like thing where they just like here, it's all it's all in this set. Just do the, <laughs> yeah, do this. It's, it's like Acrobike, Rayquaza, <laughs> Latio Star, or Latias, or I don't know which one it is, but yeah. one of those, the stars? Okay. <laughs> yeah, seems great. <laughs> yeah. I did it. I'm a genius. I put yeah. them all together. Okay. What about the Japanese meta? Do you keep an eye on that at all? Uh, yeah, I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the meta is pretty pretty solid. I, I, I think the Japanese players are really good. Yeah. Um. Uh, they su- and so like, as I was saying, like you know, we suffer because we have to split our time with expanded and standard. Uh, Japan really suffers at Worlds because they have to play a completely different format. Yeah, it's harsh. Like, it, it's super harsh, and, and like they they come they come up with these decks that are like super weird, and I'm sure it, it, they're like, and so they have to like do a bunch of online research about like our tournaments mm-hmm. and then they have to like they have to like get into our mindset and, and like a span and it, it's only like a few like a, maybe a month or two that they get the prep so it's really it's really tough for them i think um so not not envious of their situation yeah not at all yeah do you subscribe to any article websites uh i don't really i don't subscribe uh i just what I'll do is I'll like because I don't need the I don't need the breakdown of like what they're what they're what's in the specific lists. Yeah. If and and, and this is uh it's more like uh, I get to just see what they're talking about initially and then I'm like oh that's interesting. Right. Uh, just because like everything they'll say afterwards I kind of already know for the most part. Sure. Um. 
But I do think if you're a intermediate uh, beginner level player, even even on the higher end, article websites are really good uh, because they they give you they they introduce things you may not have thought of. So like that's where like the uh, initial like concept of the article is good for me. But like then the, if someone needs it like spelt out, it's it's good for them as well. So that's where I, that's where I'm at with article websites. Nice. And do you watch or listen to any uh, Pokemon related content? Any? Yeah, I definitely listen to podcasts. Mm-hmm. Uh, so podcasts are a little less uh, time commitment. Sure. So like you know I I can do be doing other things while uh, yeah, you definitely. know watch listening to a podcast. So I think podcasts is, like uh, if. if I'll be honest, if they came out with, and it's probably just because of like the time investment to read an article, <laughs> if they came out with an audio version of all the articles, I would, yeah. pro- I would probably be more likely to subscribe. Oh, nice. That's a great <laughs> idea, actually, just doing an audio book style. Yeah, uh, like if there was an audio b- book of a podcast, of, of an article, mm. I'd be way more likely to subscribe than I am currently. We need to get uh, someone on that. The best voice in Pokemon, we need to get them on that. All right. What are your thoughts on the Pokemon live streams as a player and as a viewer? Uh, they're really good for the game. Uh, I, I, so I don't get to view it live, unfortunately, for the most part. Um, uh, but I do get to watch it uh, like when I come back. And uh, I think the quality is generally pretty good. Uh, there's some like, they're getting better with downtime, which was a big deal. Yeah. Uh, but currently, I think, yeah, I think it's real good. It's 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 definitely much better than it was. Uh, and if if it just keeps improving, then it'll just get to a place where I, I'm going to be a big, a really big fan, a bigger fan than I already am. Cool. How do you think they could improve that? Uh, so one thing is the downtime is. Can get, sometimes get uh, grading. Yeah. That that's uh, another problem. I think is uh, uh, it's y- you need to like somehow make make it. Uh, the commentary can be dry sometimes, right. and. Uh, so and that that'll improve with that improves constantly with time, uh, and, and a really big th- and, and I know this is <clears throat> a really big thing is Twitch chat. They need to like <laughs> somehow and, 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 and I know it's real hard. It's real hard. Yeah. But they need to somehow like figure out a way to have Twitch chat, but it not be toxic. Sure. And I, <laughs> and, and I know I'm asking for two like polar opposites here. <laughs> <laughs> like but that that is like what i think is like the big one of the bigger hurdles another thing um that's a is they need to figure out to stop so many ties on stream that that is that is some booty to look at <laughs> like you you you, uh, you you get invested for 50 minutes right and you're like who's gonna win and then no one wins. Yeah. <laughs> that is some booty. That is not ideal. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> what would you say is the low point of you as a player in Pokemon? What's been your lowest point, if there have been any? <clears throat> lowest point. Let's see. Um, I think my lowest point is probably... Hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah, there, there's been. I think the lowest point was probably like 2015. So here's like the background. Uh, I didn't. I didn't really play that much that season. Uh, and I was kind of on the. I'm gonna play as in few tournaments as humanly possible <laughs> to get my world's invite. Yeah, great mentality and, as always. And, and, and like this year was just a mess for me uh, in terms of like Pokemon, uh, like so there was like a state championship one time where I just like overslept because <laughs> I, 
yeah, like I overslept and then like I, I, I just show up like around late. So I'm, I'm just starting off with a oh one, and then uh, you know, I, I, I of course don't make it into top eight. And then another states that will, the next weekend I got ninth, and then like. You know, I, 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 I get all the points I need right up until I just need to get points at U.S. Nationals, and I, I just whiff. Ugh. Yeah, so. Yeah, that's pretty sad. It's always, it's not the best mentality to have at the start of the season. Some, t- some people get away with it, but it, it, you are running a, a fine line trying that. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a risk. Yeah. And I, you, you win. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, let's turn it on its head. What's been your favorite Pokemon moment? Uh, yeah, I, I, I still, I'm still gonna go. I'm probably gonna go back to my uh, EUIC win. Hell I, think, yeah. I feel like that. I, I feel like that was like the big moment because I'd gotten second place before, and you know that's cool, but it gets old real fast, <laughs> and it, and it really. It sucks. It sucks no like being like <clears throat> the person who gets second, right? Yeah. Like, you know, it's it's like cool that you're there, right? It's cool that you're second place, but like it sucks not winning. Yeah. And um I think being able to like kind of break through. So like I I like I remember uh one time <clears throat> so like but before I had always like made top cut at worlds, right? Worlds and Nationals, like, for a few years. Mm-hmm. And then I would just always lose in the first round, like like clockwork. Uh-huh. And uh, that sucked. But, like, it was like, ah, you know, you, you, at least you made it, right? And then got to the point where I finally made a breakthrough, and then I just pushed all the way to the finals, and that was 2010. Mm-hmm. Um, where, and then, like, uh, so being able to break, th- I, I think... And this is probably true for everyone uh, who plays is like being able to break through a barrier that's that feels like it's been holding you back. Yeah. In terms of like, and when you finally do it, it, it's it it feels really great. So uh, I think for me, you know, being able to break through the, like those barriers and and the most recent one was EUIC. Nice. Uh, do you have any hobbies outside of Pokemon? Yeah, yeah, I, I play video games. Um, I've uh, been watching a lot of movies thanks to Movie Pass. Uh, you probably—I don't know if you know what that is. I don't really um, know. But okay, so in, in, the Uni- in the United States, they have this like subscription movie ticket service mm-hmm. called Movie Pass, and you pay like ten dollars a month, and you get to go to the movie theaters and see as many movies as you want once per day. Good deal. Yeah. So <laughs> great deal. Uh, Feels pretty unsustainable, probably is. <laughs> but you know, I'm on that sinking ship while it lasts. No. Nice. Uh, in terms of like video games, uh, let's see. Play, I play World of Warcraft sometimes. Um, play League. Uh, I've been getting. I, I actually got into this game called Deceit. Okay. Which is like, a, it's like a werewolf. Sure. But like first person shooter. Oh, cool! <laughs> yeah, so it's like it's like a werewolf mafia type game with like six people, first person shooter. It, I think it's a lot of fun. Yeah, that sounds really cool. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> uh, do you have any role models inside the game or outside of Pokemon? Um. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I really respect. Uh, so there, there's there's people I respect for various reasons. Um, I really respect. Uh, let's see, I respect Jason's like three win- world wins, and I, I I think he like definitely deserves them. Yeah. Uh, and and it's something you know I would like to emulate myself maybe one day. Sure. Uh, I res, uh, you know I I respect uh, Sam Chen's like outlook on life. And how he looks at the game and things like that, mm-hmm. in terms of like you know, it, at the end of the day, you are still playing a, a card game, right? So like, it's meant to be fun. Like don't don't uh, over don't don't stress you out so much that you're not having fun anymore. Sure, let's get it. 
let's see. I, you know, I, uh, I respect like, uh, even though Ross, I do think Ross plays, uh, Cawthon plays too slowly, uh, and, <laughs> and he can work on that, but I, I respect his, like, uh, the way, like he thinks about, like, he always tries to like break the game. Yeah. I, I respect that a lot. Um, and, uh, and I, you know, I, I, uh, I respect towards worth ethic towards the game. That's uh, that's something that is well deserved. You know, his wins, and uh, he definitely worked hard for those. Those are all really good answers. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> what uh, sports do you follow, if any? And do you have what are your teams? If you do. Mm, let's see. I don't. I used to follow like baseball a while ago. But I don't really do that any much anymore. Uh, in terms of like current like sports, I, I actually just follow like esports stuff. Okay. So um, I'm a fan of like been watching the Overwatch League a little bit. Big fan of League of Legends. Mm. So I've been watching League. Uh, let's see. God. And I am um... nice. Got it. Uh, got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, big fan. So yeah, I, I've been big fan of like uh, the SKT, uh, uh, which is a Korean team in League of Legends because uh, they have the best League of Legends player to ever play the game on their team. Okay. And I think what he's done in the game and what he can do in the game is. Even if you don't know anything about it, like what's happening, it's just, it's it's a treat to watch, and I'm a bit really big fan of that. Cool. Like, I'm a I'm a really big fan of, uh, and so like I'm a really big fan of like LeBron of uh of, like players who are at the peak of their game, and like it's just undeniable how how like strong they are. I've just made a huge mistake. I just got rid of my stadium. Oh, <laughs> we can restart. <laughs> okay, that's not a good idea. Yeah, I mean, like, this game is like not looking great for me. Like, no. <laughs> okay, that's good. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm always a big fan of like people who are at the top of their game, and regardless of what game it is, and it's like it's cl- it, they're just so they're it's like they're on another level watching mm-hmm. them play. Yeah, that's I'm a big fan of that. Nice. What about a uh, band or artist? Do you have favorites? Mm, yeah, yeah. So, uh, big fan of like some of the older school rap. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I think Eminem is probably like one of the is probably one of the best rappers of our generation. Sure. And uh, and then. Uh, I'm also a big fan of like alternative stuff, but those are just fun to listen to. Uh, I, but I think in terms of like most talent, Eminem is probably like one of my is probably like my favorite. Cool. What about a favorite book? Uh, favorite book? Let's see. What was? What do you think of like the last book I read? Um, hmm. I think my favorite. What was what was the last book I read? Hmm. <laughs> uh, not, I'll be honest, I don't really read books too much in terms of like stories. I, I, I read like I'll read like a lot of uh, like manga and stuff, but okay. I haven't read any like full on books. Um, but I, I can tell you probably like my favorite one of my favorite book stories that like turned into a movie. Go for it. Uh, uh, I was a really big fan of like Sin City. Oh yeah, I thought that was real good. And then um, I'm generally I'm generally a pretty big fan of. Oh, I'm, I'm like, so I'm not like a fan of like some of the recent book movies, but I think I think any of the comic book movies have been all really good. And yeah, nice. So there's there's like my. 
my cop out answer because <laughs> yeah. I don't I don't really read books too much. We'll go on to uh, TV shows. What's your favorite TV show? Uh, favorite TV show is Game of Thrones. Nice, good answer. Yeah. Good answer. And, and I've been waiting. It's like six more months. I gotta wait six more months or something like that. We will, they, uh... Like eight, six to eight more months, and then I can finally, I can finally see how it ends. <laughs> 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 and I, and I've been waiting. And I try to like, I try to get all my everyone I know who doesn't watch it to watch it. I'm like, listen, man. <laughs> The show is about the end. It's going to be a huge moment in television history. It is, yeah. And, you know, you have plenty of time to catch up. Plenty of time. Plenty, yeah. You can watch it yeah. in... Well, you need like a... I think it says if you can watch like one a week, you can you can uh, <clears throat> get it just in time for the new series to come out. Something like that. Yeah. And, and even if you, like... And I tried to watch one... Like, when I got into the series, I tried to watch one episode at a time. You know, you know, actually, I, I do... That was actually the last book I read. Oh, was yeah. Game of Thrones. So that's... that's I'm going to change my previous answer to Game of Thrones. I'll take it. <laughs> uh, but it, it, it's just been so long since I've read it, because the show had caught up in yeah. the past that I forgot. But, um, yeah, Game of Thrones is... Oh, it's real good. <laughs> and, 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 I, and if you ever read the books... It's really cool on how the format that they tell you, like how each chapter. So it's not in the, it's not like chapter one, chapter two. No, it gives every you that chapter story. is like a perspective. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 always first person of the person you're following. So yeah. I thought I think it's really cool that way. And it's not always the characters that you see on the screen the most. Oftentimes it's like the Onion Knight's perspective rather than like. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's like it's like side characters a lot of times. Yeah, but they're not really side characters. It's no. it's a very weird dynamic, but I I think it's very good. Yeah, those books are crazy good, by the way. Uh. What about favorite film? Touched on comic book movies. Are there any other films that stand out? Favorite film? Um, yeah, let's see. Favorite film? Mm, let's see. Let me look at my movie pass. I, I have like favorite genre. I have like some films for certain genres. Like I think John Wick for action changed the genre completely. <laughs> That's just such a feel good action movie yeah it's like it knows what it is right yeah and it just embraces it which is, i think is real great mm-hmm. um uh so, but my fate probably my favorite film god it's either star wars or lord of the rings okay like one of one of those movies yeah uh because i mean and, and it's simply just because of like how many times I've watched them and I'm not tired of them, <laughs> yeah. right? So I've watched them so much, but it's still fine. Yeah, nice. What about your favorite non-Pokemon video game? Favorite non-Pokemon video game? Uh, hmm. Favorite non-Pokemon video game? Uh, it's... I, I think it's probably just World of Warcraft. That game is so good. It's like if you ever get if you ever get into it, it's like it's like hard barrier to entry. I feel like, mm-hmm. but like it's been around for so long that it's like it, <laughs> a game that's been around that long has to be good. Like yeah. it just has to be. It's like it wouldn't be over. Like games die like now, especially nowadays, games die off within like a year. Sure. And, and like you know they they don't really get much you don't really get much mileage out of them, but like. God, that game, that game has been around for over 10 years. Yeah, and it's aging still and, fine. And it's still fine. It's yeah. still, so it's like, I think that's like, like, <clears throat> and, and, and like, it, it has all, it, it's like, if you want to play by yourself, you can do that. If you want to play with a group, you can do that. I think that, I don't think that game, the game will die when the company wants it to die. Yeah. And not before. That's a good way to put it. Let's go with our uh, favorite food up next. Uh, so I'm a big fan of Asian food. Uh, you know, hint, I'm Asian. Um, <laughs> so, but uh, let's see. Favorite food, I think. Let me think. Uh, big fan of sushi. Big fan of just rice dishes in general. Uh, ah, but my favorite thing to eat is crab. 
Oh, okay. Just uh, like cooked or like yeah, like you know, uh, like a steamed crab. Yeah, you know, um, and then like a little bit of like butter on the side. I think that's like the best. Nice. I think that's like one of the best meals. Cool. Let's go with a uh, favorite actor. Favorite actor. Let's see. Hmm. I think Denzel Washington. I, I just watched a movie with him recently, and I, I couldn't think of a movie he's been bad in. That's a, such a solid choice. I love him in The Book of Eli. That's, like, one of my top films. Yeah, so, like, and I just watched The Equalizer 2. Oh, and yeah. And, God, there's just so many, like, if, if there, there's a movie, or rather... There's, I can't, like, him and, like, Clint Eastwood are, like, two actors who are just known for being badasses. Yeah. And they're just so good at it. And it's just, like, it's, it's, when you have, like, that, and and that's a hard thing to do, like, to be really serious and, like, really, like, rip your attention. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, I think those, I think he's my, one of my favorite actors. He's the, he's the, my, it's, like, him and then, like, um... I think Tom Cruise is real good. I think he's a little crazy, but it's okay. <laughs> on the screen. On the screen, you can like him. Yeah, on the screen, he's real good. <laughs> what about actress? Actress. Let's see. Hmm. I was really hoping you to get that piece of energy. <laughs> yeah. I, I... <laughs> uh, let's see. Um... There's a lot of good ones. I think. I think the actress I've seen the most, who I uh, I thought was the best, who I have never been let down, is Angelina Jolie. Cool. For the most part. Um, yeah, but though my my knowledge of uh, actresses is, and, and my knowledge of actors in general isn't that great, <laughs> but uh, my knowledge of actresses over actors is even worse so uh, yeah she's she's pedigree it's all good yeah what about favorite comedian if you're into that sort of thing ah yeah so i have a lot of good ones here uh because i'm a a big comedy fan okay um so real big fan of joe rogan i like him a lot oh yeah Uh, um I, th- I think his name is uh, Gabriel Iglesias. Okay. He's like the uh, he's like the really uh, he goes. You can call me Chubby. <laughs> like that guy. <laughs> I mean, I've not heard of him, but that that was great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he's 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 good. Um, let's see. Oh, I, I've been watching this. I forget his name. But I've been watching this guy recently where he's like, I think it's like John Malawi or something like that. Okay. Yeah. I think he's real good. And uh, yeah, so I'm a big fan of comedy. Uh, I, I like uh, Kevin Hart is real good. I, I like listening to him. Yeah. But I, I think the, probably the one who's made me like laugh the most is I think Chris Rock. He's real, real good. Classic. What about uh, pets? Do you have any pets? Uh, I don't currently have any pets, but uh, my there are some pets at my parents' uh, place. So, like, uh, we used to have a dog, uh, uh, and now we have a cat. So I'm a big fan of both cats and dogs, but I prefer dogs over cats because cats... When they they when they want to hang around you, it's all great, right? <laughs> but when they don't, oh man, it is so lonely. Whereas dogs, dogs are just happy to see you at all times, no matter what. That's true. And I just prefer I prefer that. Cool. Do you have any siblings? Yeah, I have two older brothers. And have they ever played Pokemon? They have not. Oh, just you. Just me. Yeah. Okay, last couple of questions here. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Any superpower? Uh, 
I think. So it, it, I think the superhero that's the most broken is like the Flash. Okay. Um, and so, like, instinctively, I want to take his power, just because he can do so many things with it, and it's kind of unfair. <laughs> um, like he can phase through wall. He can like he he moves so fast that like he like goes through the at the molecules in the wall. He can like sh- phase through walls and stuff because like. You know, theoretically, if your molecules never collide, <laughs> it's pretty OP. Yeah, so it's like <laughs> it's like, okay, man, I guess <laughs> it's real good. <laughs> we'll take it. We'll take it. Yeah. Uh... Oh, okay. got it. Let's see. Uh... Do I have enough energy for this? Seven, no, I'm not... I actually don't have enough energy. That's funny. I actually ran out of energy in this game. Uh, you win. Sweet! You got away with it. Uh, yeah, I think the Flash is probably, like... Uh, and it doesn't have to be as OP as the Flash. <laughs> but I think I, th- I think Super Speed is probably one of the cooler ones. Because, uh, like, if you go fast enough, you can run on water. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, uh, if you're going that fast, like... I guess, I guess his power is more like focused on like electricity because like he like can speed up his like uh, electric signals in his body yeah. so like he can process information faster. Yeah, that's also which is, good. I think I think that's really cool. Yeah. So I, th- I think like the Flash's powers would be the best. We'll give that to Ross Cawthon and then he'll play at the same pace as all of us. <laughs> It'll be great. But, but this time. But except except there's zero mistakes. He, he he's calculated <laughs> all the possibilities. Perfect. And uh, my final question: As a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? What did I want to be when I grew up? Uh, hmm. I think I always wanted to be like. Uh, So there, there was a couple things. Uh, one thing, one thing I wanted to be was like a cook because I like I always, I always, uh, I'm a big food fan. Mm-hmm. So uh, I really appreciate any like uh, high end craft like cooking. Yeah. Um, I, and like, so I, I really admire the people who like go through that craft because uh, they get paid shit. <laughs> it's like, they get paid so little and what they're doing is actually fantastic yeah and uh you know like think about how many people in the, like who don't know how to cook yeah like there's so many and like it's so cheap to go get food and and i think that's like and so I, I really appreciate the people who have honed that craft uh to a very high level so I, I think, and uh, and I think that's just because I've always been a fan of food since yeah. a, a very young age. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think that, I think that's what I that's what I wanted. Like that's what I wanted to be before. Like things like concept of like how am I gonna live? Yeah, you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> things like that uh, came up, and, or and like, and they have to work brutal hours. They do. It's actually like pretty insane. Um, but I I, I, th- I think that's one of the professions I respect a lot are people who decide to do that just because not because of the pay but because they love to do it and I and I really respect that. Nice. Well, cheers for having uh, cheers for coming on, Pram. The floor's yours for any uh, shout outs or sponsors, all that good stuff. Over to you. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, thanks to ARG for you know being my sponsor team. Uh, thanks to TC Evolutions for you know. Of coming out with like these really sick uh, damage counters, uh, I think they're the best. They they look really good. They have a good feel to them, um, and the and the GX marker looks fantastic. Uh, you know, follow me on Twitter. Uh, I post uh, about like term like, tournaments and stuff. I also post random stuff sometimes. So if you want to like keep up with how I'm doing at a tournament, uh, my Twitter is the best way uh, to like 
follow you know follow what I'm doing and uh, all that stuff. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, you know, thanks for having me. Yeah, well, that's it, guys. Hope you all enjoyed. We'll be back next week with another uh, player to interview. Don't know who yet, but we'll find out. Once again, Pram, thanks a lot for watching and coming on. And uh, see you guys next time.